Oops, it looks like I've just redesigned another random website on the web. Hello, I'm your host Kay Senior from Kaysenior.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist and today we're going to redesign another random website on the web. So if you want to get web design inspiration, make sure you watch until the end because I'm going to share my whole workflow from the brief to the wireframes to the design to the actual web conversion. So enough talk, let's dive in. One, finding the candidate. So today I felt like looking for an architect. So I typed architect Tulsa because why not? And I went up to page number four until I stumbled upon this website here. So welcome to Alan Madewell and Associates website. Now, before we go any further, I really want to stress the fact that I'm not mocking anyone. This is not the purpose of these videos. The purpose is just to find one project that we can actually transform to a modern website. Now, design is really subjective and that's why it's always good to start with a brief, with a mini audit. And that's what we're going to do in our next point. Next, the brief and the mini audit. Now, I'm just going to guess here because we don't know much. And actually, this reminds me of a client that I've had where the client came and told me that his firm was going to be sold to his children. His daughter and his son were taking over and they wanted to start afresh. They wanted a new identity and they also wanted to change the style of houses they were going to build. So for today's video, I'm going to pretend it's exactly the same. So what can we say about this homepage? Now, of course, we're not going to redesign the whole website because this video would take hours, but let's focus on the hero section here. So first of all, I think that the layout is way too narrow. So let's take a look. And bear in mind that this is not the resolution I usually browse the internet with. Usually I have a way higher resolution, but just for the sake of this video so that you see things bigger, with my usual resolution, it's even smaller. It's really tiny compared to the screen real estate. And it's such a pity in my opinion, especially for a website that needs to showcase big images. Next, there are too many slides. I counted five slides. You should aim for one, two, maximum three slides because nobody's going to watch all the slides anyway. Next, I don't see any call to action. All I see is the name of the firm. I have some elements in the navigation. I see the images and then it says architecture and interior design, but he never asked me to do something. Click here, do this, do that. This is a missed opportunity for business. Next, the color palette could be improved. Now, once again, that is really subjective. But in my opinion, if you want to be sober, you might as well go for black and white because that is associated with luxury. But here, this color scheme, meh. Once again, just a personal opinion. Next, the branding could be improved. Now, the business name seems to be Alan Madewell and Associates. Now, the domain name is Madewell Architects, which is more straightforward in my opinion and easier to remember. Plus, using Alan Madewell and Associates makes the logo really, really long. And finally, there isn't enough text for search engines. Now, maybe this client strategy doesn't care about Google. Maybe. They're doing referrals and they don't need Google. But still, even if you're not aiming for ranking in the search engines, you need to add a little bit more text when people land on the homepage if you want them to stay on your website and look further for information. Okay, with all of that in mind, we can move on to our next point. Next, wireframing. So at this stage, I can start wireframing the new layout. And I always like to have the example of the current website next to it, at least when I start. So before we start, I'm just going to go to the assets section and we'll see that a little bit later in this video, but I already have a few assets when it comes to the wireframe. So I'm just going to copy all of that then come here and I'm just going to paste all of that. And then I can start wireframing. And by the way, I'm using Affinity Designer, but you can use pretty much any tool you want. You can use Adobe XD, it's completely free. You can use the game, you can use Photoshop, Affinity Photo, whatever you prefer. I tend to like Affinity Designer, it's very simple and I'm trying to keep things simple. Okay, so let's take a look. So this is what we had and this is what we are aiming for. So the logo would be on the left. Then we have the navigation in the middle and a call to action on the right hand side. Then we want to have a big image or maybe a slider, but with less slides. We want to have our value proposition clearly outlined and a call to action. Next, we want to have a problem description section. We need to talk about the problem and then the call to action actually is going to redirect the user to the second part here. Now, initially, I just wanted to redesign the hero section, but I decided to add this section here. Of course, in a real life scenario, 
the home page will be longer with a logical funnel but that video would be much longer and i value your time so i just want to give you the basics here first you describe the problem and then you describe the solution whether you do it in five steps in 10 steps it really depends on the use case but you get the idea now as you can see here on the left hand side we want to add a type of widget where you see the before and after with two pictures so even before the actual redesign we can clearly see that now the user knows what to do when he's landing on that page okay so now i can start working on the tablet and mobile versions but i'm going to speed this up okay so this is the final result as you can see and this is the final result after some tweaking so let's take a look and let's compare it to the initial website and in case you're wondering this is the mobile version can you see the amount of vertical space lost because of the logo because the logo is so long look here and compare okay with our wireframes ready and approved we can move on to our next point next mood boarding so mood boarding is the art of collecting visual elements that you want to integrate in your own design. It's not about stealing, it's about finding some inspiration of things you like and you really want to integrate. It could be the font here, it could be the rectangle here, it could be the color scheme, it could be the layout of the images, you get the idea. Mood boarding can actually help you tremendously when you get into the design phase. Next, preparing the assets. Now, I've already used those assets here for the wireframes and you should actually have those assets ready, especially for the wireframes. I'm always reusing the same element, so it makes it really easy. Now, when it comes to the design, you need to prepare your assets. It's going to be way easier if you prepare everything beforehand and then you have everything ready. Now, of course, you may need to add some new things while you're building the project, but at least you should prepare. So I've done my homework and this is what I've come up with. So this is the type of buttons I'm going to use. I got some text. I got some of the images. So now I'm almost ready to start designing. And that brings me to my next point, identity. So I said I'm almost ready to design because before I start designing, I need to take care of the identity. Now, as you may recall from the mini audit, there were some issues with the logo. Now, in a real life scenario, the client would go to a graphic designer if you don't offer that service and would have the logo redesigned if they followed your advice. Now, in case you also offer graphic design services, at least you're sure you're going to end up with a good looking and modern logo. So I started from the initial logo here and I tried to recreate the image here and you can see that here. Then I tried to mix it with a different color for the A. I mean, that's the A, I suppose, in uh, Alan Madewell. So the A and a different color for the M. Then I tried some other shapes. Then I tried with letters and I ended up with this. So I didn't want to use it like this, but it gave me some ideas. So let me show you. So I did some more tests and I finally nailed it down to a couple of candidates those two here so this one is a more modern font and this one is a serif font which aligns well with the current image of the website but remember what we said for the use case the scenario is that the children of mr madewell are going to take over the firm and they want to give it a new spin they also want to create new types of homes and they really want to have a modern image so since we are aiming for the future i decided to go with this one the idea was to keep a reference to the original logo, but to make it more modern. So now that we have a new logo, we can work on the rest of the identity. So let me show you what I've come up with. Oh, and by the way, some of these elements come from my branding guide, which you can download on my website for free. Initially, it was made for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you're interested, just go to casinocom forward slash branding and follow the instructions on screen. So this is it black and white and gray shade color palettes as I explained earlier it's often associated with luxury then the new logos that you can see here I kept the old one just to have a visual reference and for the fonts we're going to use Laura for the titles it's a serif font and we're going to use the hint font for the body and for the buttons next it's finally time to start designing so I'm going to go into editing mode and I'm going to use the wireframes as a starting point. 
So first of all, let me make some space because I already know what I want to do. I have an idea, but I need a little bit more space. And then I'm just going to paste my assets. So I got some of the assets here. Let me put it on the side so I can work better. Okay, so let's get started. And as usual, I'm going to speed this up. Okay, so this is the final result. And here is what it looks like after some tweaking. And we can even go a little bit further. So let me show you. I'm going to activate the grid. And after playing with the grid, this is what I've come up with. So let's compare it to the original version here on the left hand side. And of course, I'm biased because I built it, but it looks way cleaner. And one thing that's really important if you look at the current website on the left hand side, we only saw images of houses. Okay. And it makes sense, right? You're selling houses, you're showing houses. But to me, it lacked the human element because you can see this is a really profession-centric vision. So the architect is proud of his work and that's normal when you build, you know, houses like these. I mean, you should be proud. But what I'm saying is this talks to architects. Maybe they know that this is really hard to build or whatever. And I know that the final clients, they want their house to look good. But what I'm trying to say is the final client may care a little bit less about the technicalities of how the house is built and they may care more about what's in it for them. That's why I wanted to add some human faces and people smiling and laughing and pair it with a slogan like we build homes, not houses. And it was actually tough to find the right images. Let me show you. So finally, I decided to, to use three images in the slider. So this one, this one, and this one. Because this one is just a phase when you're happy, you're going to build a house. This is when the house is built and you can enjoy it. And this is another image celebrating the happiness of people moving into a new house. They've purchased a house. This is the project of a lifetime. You really want to show some emotion with your design. That's why I always say that we web designers and designers can play a significant role for our clients. We can bring them more business by helping them communicate better. Okay, so this is the final result. And if we compare it with the original website, as you can see, we've come a long way. So at this stage, either you're gonna pass this design to the developers, or if you're developing yourself or using a theme builder, you can move on to the next point. Next converting our designs for the web. So as a reminder, you may use whatever you want. You may code from scratch if you wish so. You may use any CMS you want. You may use WordPress and within WordPress, you're free to just use vanilla WordPress with Gutenberg or you can use any page or theme builder that you want. Now, in my case, I'm trying to be efficient. So I always work with an ecosystem and the ecosystem I'm using is Astra as a theme and Elementor and Elementor Pro as a theme builder. Now, I'll also be using Ultimate add-ons for Elementor and I will let you know why we use this plugin in a moment. And by the way, if you wanna purchase Elementor Pro or Ultimate add-ons for Elementor, you'll find some links in the description below. Now, these are affiliate links, so it means that I do get a commission if you purchase after clicking on one of my links. But to you, it doesn't change anything, but I do get a commission that in turn helps me keep on creating free content just for you on this channel. And as always, I only recommend stuff that I use myself and that I would recommend to my friend and family. Now, the next tool in my arsenal is Wire Mentor, which is a tool that I built and you don't have to use it. I just find it faster for me to work with this. So basically, Wire Mentor is a wireframing and prototyping tool when you know that you're going to build a website with Elementor Pro, because basically it's built on top of Elementor Pro. Now, like I said, you can totally use any tool that you want. Now, I've already shown you how to do this with Affinity Designer and it's fine, but if I had to do this for each and every part of a website for all the pages, it would take me months to complete a project. So instead, I like to use a tool like Elementor and my own tool, Wire Mentor, just to speed things up. So let me show you how it works. I have a lot of various elements, blocks, and layouts. And basically, I can just copy. I can copy a header. I have predefined headers. Let me right click and copy. And I'm just going to paste the navigation 
navigation here. Then I can go back and I can pick a mobile version. So let me right click, copy, and I'm just going to paste it here. Next, I can copy a hero section. So right click and copy, and then I can just paste it. So basically that's how I speed things up with Wire Mentor. And I'm just going to copy and paste a few blocks and tweak it. Now, of course, I didn't mention it, but if you've done all the wireframes with a tool like Affinity Designer, or Adobe XD, then you can go straight to the design phase within your theme builder. But like I said, in my case, I like to do the wireframes within the theme builder so that it's a gain of time for later. And this is what I've come up with. So let me show you. And as you can see here on top, we have a slider with images changing the Ken Burns effect. Now, if we take a look at the original wireframes we did in Affinity Designer, it's pretty close. Okay, so with that, I can now start designing. So basically, now that I'm already in Elementor Pro, all I need to do is change the images, the fonts, the color palette, so that I can match the design. So we went from this to this wireframe and as you can see we have our sections here so this is the web version and from this we went to this which is the web version of the design we initially did in affinity designer let me refresh this so you can see the subtle animation so it loads with a little delay as you can see here if i click on discover island here and we got some parallax with the image here on the left hand side and finally we have our section here and this is why I use uh, ultimate add-ons for Elementor so as you can see I can just drag it around and it shows like kind of before and after and uh, to be honest it's not the same picture it's not the same angle I mean it's the same house and this is a real project uh, I worked on this with a photographer so it's the same house but it's not the exact same angle of course if you really want that effect to work, you want the same picture. But in this case, many people didn't even notice the difference and they were wowed by the effect, which is a simple thing. So as you can see, it looks really clean. Now let's take a look at the tablet version. So this was the wireframe and this is the final version with the slider. We have the parallax and here also people would drag with their finger. Next, we have the mobile version and this is the final result the web version and once again let me refresh so we can see the subtle animation of the block here and if i tap i get this animation with the parallax and i can also use the effect of course it's smaller because hey it's a smartphone but it's still working fine now this video only took a few minutes but to be honest i started working at 7 in the morning it's not 8 p.m I didn't take a break. I didn't take a single break. So I work from 7 to 8 p.m. So when I see some tutorials that say you can create your website in 10 minutes, please let me laugh. If you want to, especially if you want to build a premium website, it's going to take you way more than that. But this is so much fun. And like I often say, let's put the fun back in web design. Themes, templates are great, but let's build, let's create. Now, if you want more of this type of videos, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. And one thing I would like to ask you is if you enjoyed this video, if it gave you any value, please give it a thumbs up. It's a small step for you. It's going to take you a split second, but it's going to change so much for this channel. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe.